everybody, Joy here. Yeah, back at Snippetville Central. We're so happy to be home. We decided, you know what? We're gonna end up being down there at that RV fix it place after Christmas because we're still waiting for something to come in and it never ever comes in when it's supposed to. Everybody there says the same thing. So we were at dinner Saturday night at Olive Garden and we looked at each other and just like, let's go home. <laughs> so we came home Sunday afternoon and we couldn't even be more happier to be here, let me tell you. So, snippet of today, December 20, 2022. I'm making another one of those gold package things. You remember my gold packages? You remember these things I showed you. I don't know why, I thought there was something in here besides what's in here. <laughs> all that's in these gold bags is a bunch of spices. It's just a powder. And you just pour it out all over what you're going to make. Well, the last one I made was the pork chops. And there must have been eight boneless pork chops. You know, the really good ones that I put in here. Maybe six. It was horrible. So horrible, I almost threw it all away. I couldn't even eat it. I couldn't stand to smell it. It was terrible. I forced myself to eat one of them. Kind of scraped all the stuff off of it. Jerry wouldn't hear that day. And the next day he came back home and I said, I've got these pork chops, uh, but I don't know if you'll want to eat them. They're just absolutely terrible. He said, really? He said, well, we shouldn't throw them away. I said, well, let me see if I can't fix them up. So I took them out of the leftover dish and I rinsed them totally off, totally off. And then I just put them back in the pan and I fixed them with a different sauce on them. Um, I don't even know what I did now, but they turned out edible. So uh, I wouldn't recommend these that much. If you already know how to cook and you already know how to flavor things, you don't need this. All it is is salt and pepper and spices and this one's got, this one I'm making today is a four pound roast. And uh, I think it's got some kind of gravy mix in it because you end up with roast beef and gravy. But I make a really good roast beef already. So, but since I bought these, I'm making myself use them. This one is gold metal chicken and gravy. So I might try that one next. All right, so far today, for my snippet bill of the day, I wanted to thank whoever told me to buy this tea. Oh my goodness, is this tea ever good? The only problem is it's black tea and it's not decaf and I'm not supposed to have caffeine. But what I'm going to do and what I have done is instead of having the coffee, I have this and it's just luscious. Can you see the name? Can you see it? It's hard for me to tell the way the lights are. It says Bigelow Toasted Coconut Almond Bark. Now, I never would have bought that because, I mean, who wants to eat the bark off a tree? Not me. So I don't know what the bark has to do with it, but oh, is it ever good. You could just, you can't smell it. It's, the tea bags are wrapped really, really good with foil to keep them fresh. You can't even smell it until you open up the tea bag. Oh, is that ever good. So, I had to make myself a bracelet to match my snowman. So I just got that done. It's got two little things hanging from it. I'm waiting for the glue to dry. So let me put this on because I can't make a video without the proper Christmas adornments. <laughs> I just push um, the elastic cord through this. I don't like bracelets that have clasps. I mean, I like them. But when you wear a bracelet that has a clasp, the clasp is always on the top of your wrist. And the pretty part that you want to show is always on the bottom of your wrist. So you have to go around like this all day long. You know, hi, how are you? Yes, I know I can't shake your hand because my bracelet's upside down. <laughs> I know. You want to see it up close? <laughs> so just to match my snowman blouse, see? You have to, maybe if I put it down there on the white, you can see it. I see some white in the camera. <laughs> I never know what people can see till I edit. So I made that to go with my snowman. Remember my snowman? I think this is a really, really cute design, embroidery design from embroiderylibrary.com. Like it very much. And it's not real, real thick. It doesn't take forever and ever to sew out. So I like that too. So 
Got my roast in the crock pot. It's going to cook for six hours on high, so we'll have it tonight for dinner. But, oh my goodness, I hope it turns out better than those pork chops did. <laughs> that was bad. So, so far I've made the chili. Oh, then I, the chili was okay. I added some more tomato sauce or some more water or something to it because it was it was very very spicy and I don't like very very spicy you know I want to taste the meat and the beans I don't want to taste the spice you know it blows your tongue out of your mouth so I fixed it up and the next day it was actually better oh 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 I'm having issues I'm having issues with the plastic bag I don't, must not put the plastic bag on right <laughs> it's sticking to the side of the pan I wonder how you're supposed to do that hmm no directions does it hurt if it's, well, it's hot inside, would it matter? Y'all tell me, what are you supposed to do with this plastic bag? <laughs> so anyway, gonna cook this. Then I have to show you what I bought. There is a uh, quilt shop in Kingfisher, Oklahoma. And if you watch me all the time, you'll remember when Jerry's brother died. And we went there for his service. And after the service, we went to the little cafe at the little town, little downtown, old, 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 old downtown in a little town. And there is a really good little cafe there, restaurant. And I used to eat there a lot when I was uh, taking care of his mom and getting her house ready to sell. And I used to know all the people in there, but it's all different people now. So Jerry's cousins were there and his aunt was there and his brother, um, his brother's son, and his, his first wife, his only wife, his first wife, they were divorced, and um, a small group, Jerry and me. And, but they have these cousins, these two girls. One of the girls couldn't make it, but the other girl did. And they grew up very, very together, close together, and played together all the time and everything. So they, they were real close, and that's why the cousin came. And so her name was Janie. Well, it just so happens <laughs> that Janie's a quilter. She's also a nurse and she's married to a doctor, but she's a quilter. And so she was sitting, I think I was sitting next to her mother. So it was me and her mother and then her. And so I wasn't even talking to her or anything during the meal. And so we were almost done eating and she got up and she walked around behind me and she said, there's a quilt shop right next door and it's open for 15 more minutes. I put the rest of my hamburger down, got up out of my chair, and we walked next door. It is the cutest quilt shop. They're getting ready to get much, much bigger. They're just in a little building next to the little restaurant. You know how it's just all these little businesses hooked together? And so it was the little cafe, and then the next little building section was the quilt shop. So we went in there, and of course they were about to close. But um, told the girls, you know, that I, I used to be there a lot. And I was so excited they put a quilt shop in. I wish it was there, blah, blah, blah. And we got to talking. And I started shopping. And I bought all of the fabrics I needed to make my 4th of July quilts. Remember the big eagle I did? Uh, the flag and the eagle? I got that there. So anyway, the shop has, every single Tuesday on YouTube, they have a one-hour video live in the shop where they hold up things and they say we have this and we have this and blah 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 and they hold up all these things well usually uh, i don't like to shop like that but this one time i was watching it and they held this up and i thought it was the cutest thing let me see if i can get the paper out and show you sorry if the light's not good it looks like it's good I end up having to add light anyway, even when I have those lights. Let me show you this. It is so stinking cute. And good luck finding it on the internet. It's called Northwoods Moose. And so, <laughs> my lightning fast brain, I thought the moose was looking out the window from inside the house. <laughs> like, well, why is there a tree in the house? Why is there a moon in the house? Well, major duh. <laughs> The moose is looking in the window from the outside. So this thing was like $28. After I bought, I just assumed, you know, it was a normal quilt pattern, 12 bucks or something. But it comes with, it comes with the buttons for the eyes, and it comes with those fish, those fisher buttons that 
Moose up on the hill is a button. I don't know what else is a button, but it comes with these little buttons and things in it. So it wasn't cheap. And so <laughs> after I saw how much I paid for it, I thought, oh, it must include the fabric. Well, guess what? It doesn't include the fabric. <laughs> but it's not the cutest thing. So we had a humongous stack of mail, of course, since we've been gone almost a month. And so our mail lady just holds our mail till we come home. Oh, here's the little buttons. Let me see if I can show you the buttons. I don't know if I can. Let me see. Can you see the upside down bear? And the fish, there's really not that much in here. This thing is very overpriced. So, oh, there's the moose. There's the little, there's the moose that's going to be up on the hill. And the fish. And a couple buttons. So, majorly overpriced. <laughs> but super cute. So, it really does help if you don't lose your fabric. Remember on uh, my last snippets, I told you I had lost all the little rectangles for the trees, for my tree quilt that I'm making. Well, they were upstairs on my cutting table, right where I put them. But the bag I put them in was upside down, and it was just a solid piece of green fabric. And so I couldn't tell that all the cut-up strips were in it, because I didn't pick it up and turn it over. I just thought, oh, that's from that other tree quilt I made. So I have found it. That is good news. So I'm still unloading the coach. I spent hours yesterday unloading the coach because Jerry's getting ready to put it over in the barn. And of course, the refrigerator's full of food and the closet's full of clothes. And even though we're going to go someplace in January, back to a fix-it place, but a different fix-it place, something about, let me think, what is it about? Oh, it's another recall. But you can't take it to that place. You have to take it to the place that built the the chat the engine or I don't know anyway you have to take it to a different place and it's down there in Dallas and I doubt they'll let us stay in the coach for that we may have to get a hotel we shall see Bumblebee but I'm going to take something with me to sew for just in case I don't know what it will be all right that's the end of my snippet for right now I'll be back You want to come with me to see if we can find that little Christmas tree I made last year out here? That's my scan and cut machine. No, my Go, my Geo cutter. <gasps> I found it! Look over there in my stack of boxes. <laughs> I found my little tree. I'm so excited. So I'm going to take that downstairs. And then I have to wrap a present for Jerry. He already knows what it is, but he's forgotten. We bought it at Shields when we were down there in Texas. It's really nice. So let me get my tree out of here and go set it up. I have to tell you something about a hug from a beaver. I sure do. But I need to eat some chocolate for some strength mm, to unload this tree. Okay, get your scissors. <laughs> Chocolate, coconut, covered almonds. Mm. Is there anything? That tea might be better than that. Oh, this is cute. Look at that. Remember Jerry's brother came last year? And so I made a little bitty tree because his brother was going to be here. And if you could see where his brother lived. Oh, I had no idea how amazing it really was. That poor guy lived in the biggest mess. Now look. Is that cute or what? And I made jewelry to hang on the tree for ornaments because it's so tiny. And of course everything always gets spread out. Look at that ornament. It's they're not ornaments, they're earrings. <laughs> Aren't they cute? I was just looking for red balls this morning to put on my my blue and red bracelet. I thought, where's my red balls? Well, duh, here they are. How cute! 
<laughs> that is so cute. All right, we can't have Christmas up here. Although this would be a cute tree up here, wouldn't it? So I've got to get this downstairs. Uh, how many think I can get downstairs without falling and dropping the tree? <laughs> I bet I can do it. Have you noticed everybody's doing Vlogmas? <laughs> I know, I don't know how they do as much as they do every single day. And I don't know how I get through every single day and I'm not getting anything done. <laughs> it's three o'clock, <laughs> three o'clock. I have not folded one piece of fabric. I have not cleaned up a single thing in here. I started that roast. I made lunch for, oh I know, I know it's not my fault. It's Philly's fault. It's my BFF Philly's fault. She texted me when I was fixing lunch and said, can you call me? And so as soon as I got done with lunch, I called her FaceTime. And so we talked for quite a while on the phone. Do you know that sweet angel? She invited me and Jerry to come to her, her house in Tulsa for Christmas. And my friend Philly, you all know her. A lot of you know her. You know, she comes up to here on me. Sweet, sweet, very, very good friend of mine. Her husband is very, very ill and has been for several years, and so she's caring for him. They're waiting for a liver, and um, her brother uh, is very, very ill, and she moved her brother from California to Tulsa so she could care for him as well. So she got her brother in a an assisted living place, and so that's, that's helped a lot. Instead of having to go to his house every single day, she only has to go two or three times a week. So that's good. I'm happy about that for Philly. But she has her hands so full taking care of her very ill husband and her very ill brother. And she is having Christmas at her house. She just had Thanksgiving at her house with all kinds of company. And now she's having Christmas and she invited me and Jerry. Just unbelievable. If I could invite her and Roger here to my house, <laughs> Yes, definitely, definitely. But he can't leave. He has to be near his doctor and near the hospital. He has to go in quite often to have fluid drained off his chest or his stomach or something. I, I don't totally understand. It's, I just know that he's got a really bad liver and needs a new one. So, talked to her for quite a while and caught up on everything. And I enjoyed that immensely. But I didn't tell you about the beaver. Did you think I was kidding when you saw my title? Did you think, oh my goodness, <laughs> what has Joy done now? <laughs> well, there's this store that we really, really like, and it's a gas station is what it is, but it's probably got a hundred pumps. It's huge, it's just huge. If you all live in Texas, you know about it. It's called Bucky's. So on our way home from the RV Fix-It place, we always stop there and we go in and we get some lunch and take it back to our coach. They have a gigantic parking lot. So we park out in the parking lot and we go out in our coach and eat our lunch. So yesterday we were in there and um, we were walking around and I was just looking, I was looking for a gift for uh, Sierra, you know, that darling, darling Sierra. And I was looking for something with an angel on it and I couldn't find anything and so, I decided I better do something different for Sierra. So I'm standing in the middle of this big aisle and I'm just looking, like Jerry's walking up ahead of me and he thinks I'm following him, but I'm not. <laughs> He's ready to check out. And I notice this big beaver guy. Bucky's is a beaver. Bucky is a beaver. B-U-C-E-E -E or B-U-C-C-E-E. -E. I've seen it so many times you think I could spell it. So to me it really says Bucy's, but it's pronounced Bucky's. And so they've got this beaver there dressed in a Santa Claus shirt. It's not a beard, and he's got a Santa hat, and he's got a Santa shirt. You know, a red shirt with a big black belt and the gold buckle, and uh, then the hat. And, so, and he's a great big, um, oh, what do you call it? You know, mascot. It's not a puppet. It's life size, you know, life size. And got, I, I have a picture. I'm going to show you a picture. Just wait, just wait. And so I see this great big beaver. And of course, he's there for the children. You know, he's not there for the grannies. He's there for the children. Well, there aren't any children around. And he's just by himself. And some lady's got him by the arm leading him because he can't see, I guess. 
out of the big head that he's got on. So um, I go up to him and I said, can I get a picture with you? Hey, and the girl, or I don't know if the beaver talked to me. I don't think the beaver talked to me. The girl said, sure you can. I handed Jerry my phone. I said, take a picture of us. And so the beaver, and heaven only knows who's in this beaver outfit. I have no idea if it's a young man, an old man, or what. But you'll see in the picture, the beaver has his arm around me, and he's actually patting me. Patting me right there. I'm like, hmm, who's in this beaver costume? <laughs> but anyway, you know me, I'm collecting hugs here for Christmas, right? And so, I got the wonderful beaver hug in the cute picture, but before that happened, it's just unbelievable. We were leaving the uh, campground where we stay when we go to National Indoor RV Center to get our RV worked on. And it was Saturday night. We were supposed to stay there this week, too. And we're eating at the Olive Garden. And Jerry and I looked at each other, and both of us just went, let's go home because we did not want to end up there after Christmas. So, we got everything ready the next morning. We brought the slides in, did everything, all the things you need to do. Jerry hooked up the Jeep, and we drove around. I mean, like the building, let me see, how can I show you this? So say, here's the building, and you drive back here, and there's a big campground right back here. So when you leave, you come out of the campground and you go around the building, out the gate, and over here is where they have their, their pits to dump your tank, your black tank and your gray tank. So we pulled up over here, and there's like a station here, station here, station here, station here. Whole bunch of them. You could, you could probably put eight coaches in there, okay? But we were the only one. And so we pulled up, you know, toward the front in case somebody else came. And... What Jerry got out and opened up whatever he does out there, the hoses and the drains and everything, and he drained all of the tanks. So then, about that time, this other, let me put my RV place back up here, <laughs> another coach had just come around behind us and parked back here. So we're up here, and the other coach is back here. So, we start to take off, and we're pulling the Jeep, you understand, we have the Jeep behind, we're pulling the Jeep, and we heard this loud, horrible screech. <coughs> horrible. Jerry, stop, 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 Jerry, stop the coach. I said, oh my gosh, something else is squeaking, the window fell out or something. Oh my goodness, we better get out. And so Jerry's driving, so I loosen my seatbelt, I get out, I walk down the steps, and I start to walk backwards. And so let's put the park back up again. <laughs> so we stopped. I get out, and I'm walking backwards, and back here, there is a lady that got out of this coach back here, and she's running toward me. And I finally catch up with her, and she says, it's your Jeep, it's your Jeep, and I look. And on the ground, under the Jeep, from where we started to, not from way back where we were in the campground, we didn't have any issue there, but over here from where we started to take off and the screech started, thick black stripe on the cement from the tire on our Jeep. Somehow the emergency brake was on. But anyway, that's not what I'm here to tell you. This nice lady comes walking toward me. I go walking toward her. She tells me what it is. By that time, Jerry's out. I holler at Jerry, tell Jerry what it is. Jerry goes back to get in the Jeep to fix it. And this lady, I don't know this lady from anybody. I've never seen her before. This lady walks up to me and hugs me. Hug, maybe I just look like this fragile little old lady that can't take care of myself. I don't know. I'm beginning to wonder. <laughs> But she just gives me the warmest hug. I said, well, my name is Joy. And she said, well, my name's Teresa. <laughs> I just thought, this is just, I just wanted to turn around and go back and stay there some more and see if I could collect any more hugs. <laughs> so I just had to tell you about my two more 
heaven appointed special hugs. One from a really nice lady named Teresa and one from a very friendly uh, beaver. Hey everybody, this is um, Joy here of course. Um, Wednesday, it's Wednesday, uh, December 21. <gasps> that means I get my YouTube money today. 21st of every single month, YouTube puts your money in your bank account. So that's always a fun day, unless it's a Sunday or a Saturday or a holiday. <laughs> So I'll have to go look and see how much money I get because of you wonderful subscribers. Yesterday, I got to have a long talk with my BFF, Philly, who lives in Tulsa, Oklahoma. And I just hung up from a long conversation with my YouTube friend, subscriber, in England. Yes, England. Can you believe it? <laughs> I think she calls where she lives Quovo. I think that's what she calls it, but her name's Catherine, and um, she said they wanted to come to America, and I said, well, you have to come see us, <laughs> and so she promised they'll come see us. Her husband loves airplanes. I, she said, you're welcome to come see us. I said, well, you know, I don't think our RV can get there, and I'm not getting on an airplane ever, ever. So, you want to see something? <laughs> I don't know if you do or you don't. But, you know, it's my daily thing. I have this over there next to my sewing machine. I sewed on it for hours yesterday. And I'm going to finish it. It's all done except for the sleigh. And I got block number three in my big stack of mail that the post office was holding for me. So, I'm going to be working on that. And then I'll have three of those little blocks done. And no, no, I didn't finish that blouse. <laughs> I don't know where it is. Or is that crazy glass? I don't know. The thing is, I told you yesterday, we wanted to come home. But I wanted to show you this. I ordered this from Bernina Jeff's place. Bernina Jeff sells the coolest things. He invents things to help you enjoy your sewing machine more. Now, I got this from him, two of them. He said these are the best tweezers in the whole wide world, and you have to order two because your husband will take your tweezers if you don't. And good luck getting them open. So he said these are the best tweezers in the whole wide world for sewing with. So I don't have a pair of them, so I guess they don't come with your sewing machine. You have to buy them separate. But they say Bernina on them. So this is them. And they have an offset point. And they're very, very pointy. And so they can really pick stuff. See if it can pick up a hair. Yes, it can pick up a hair on my arm. So... I got two pair of those, and, oh, you have to order some of this. I should stock it here, and I should sell it. <laughs> but I got this from Bernina Jeff. It's called Quilter's Hand Cream, and you know, I cannot do anything with the fragrance. So it can't have a fragrance, so this is totally unscented. It's called Dove White Unscented Quilter's Hand hand cream. And I just put it on, but I'll do it a little bit. See? It's like whipped cream. This is the applicator. And so it just squirts out like whipped cream. Look. <gasps> oh. And it is wonderful. Wonderful. You know, when you're working with fabric, it really dries your hands out. It's working with paper, working with fabric. This stuff soaks in. You put it on, and it just soaks in. Oh. Wonderful stuff. I love it. It is um, infused with aloe vera, lanolin, and vitamins A, D, and E. I wonder if you could like put it on the top of your coffee and drink it. Oh. Anyway, Bernina Jeff, he's in Colorado. If you just look up Bernina Jeff on YouTube, his videos will come up. And then down underneath in the description box, no affiliation whatsoever, doesn't know me from Adam. You look down in the description box and it'll tell you how you can go to Shopify, Bernina Jeff, or someplace and buy things from him. And they're kind of hard to find. It's not the most organized shop. But maybe you can even find it somewhere else. But oh my gosh, I just got it yesterday or the day before. See, it's all soaked in. It's all soaked in. It's just, ah. Uh, Wonder and no smell whatsoever. So I got that from him. 
I got the two little tweezers from him and I got this thread stand. I haven't tried it yet, but I have a couple sewing machines that don't have the sideways thing that you stick on. And my regular spools are too skinny and too close together. So I have to have a different way to hold my thread. And the one I've been using has a great big clunky metal bottom with this big tall spindle coming off of it with the hook on top. And I'm forever having to, I'm using the um, invisible thread and it's forever falling off or wrapping around it or whatever. So I decided to buy this. This is from Superior. And you know Superior is the one that has all those fabulous threads. I don't know if it's related to this or not. But it says Superior Thread Holder. So I'm going to try it today. If you do a lot of embroidery where you, you know, put the applique on, it's not embroidery. If you do a lot of the uh, satin stitching where you put the applique pieces down and then you have to stitch all around them, yeah, this to hold my thread. And of course, if you have a sewing machine, like I have uh, the 740s, I don't have to have this for that. But for my 930 and my 1130, my oldest sewing machines, I have to have that. Well, I haven't had it in the past, but I have it now, and I'm hoping it's better than that big clunky metal thing. I hate that thing. You want me to show it to you? Hold on. Here's the one I have. Clunky. Clunky. Heavy. Very heavy. That's so it doesn't move around on the table. But this thing fits in it right there. And so you put your spool of thread on this. I don't have one here. So you put your spool of thread on this and then you bring it up here and you hook it in this hook. Well, this clunky bottom doesn't move, but this thing moves all over the place. And it is so hard to keep my thread in it, not to mention I can't even see the invisible thread. So. This is what I have been using, and I bought this to replace it. So I guess this sits on the ground. Yeah, I'll show you the picture on the back. I think I already did. So we're going to try this today. I'll let you know if I like it or not. Okay? So I had to tell you about this awesome hand lotion. Oh, I, w I should take... You want to see my socks? Can you see my socks? <laughs> I have my snowman socks on, my Christmas socks, <laughs> so I don't want to take them off, but I might take this upstairs and put it on my feet tonight. Oh, awesome stuff. Love it, love it. I, don't, I have no idea how much it costs. I got a receipt from him naming the things that I got from him, but there's no prices. So check it out, Bernina Jeff. Also, if you have Bernina sewing machines, he sells them up there in Colorado. And the women, of course the women, you know, they come in all the time, all the time. How do you do this? How do you do that? How do you do this? How do you do that? And so he has all these videos. They're very, very good. Showing you how to do things that you aren't going to know how to do unless you have him show you how to do it. A different way to oil your bobbin case. Totally different. Same as before, but a different way that you do together. Okay? <laughs> He shows you how to keep your thread from constantly coming unthreaded. Oh, he actually invents things. He invented these things. I had these little clippy things with command strips hooked on the back of my sewing machine to put the thread through so the thread would quit coming unthreaded. And he called Bernina about it. And Bernina told him, well, we want you to use those thread nets. He said, well, those thread nets are just a pain I don't like to use them, and I thought, me either, me either. <laughs> so I bought, instead of using this, which was his suggestion, he invented something that you actually screw and attach to your sewing machine, and it's an extra eye to put your thread in. Brilliant. Really nice guy. I know you'll like him. Check him out. Bernina Jeff. Okay? Did you see my jingle shirt? <laughs> I meant to show you my jingle shirt. Can you jingle? Oh, you have to go like this. Sound like Santa, Santa, Santa. <laughs> I made it. Yes, I did. Because, you know, I make jewelry. So I put the little jingle bells up there. Of course, you have to take them off to wash it. And that's no problem. I only wear it once a year. So 
<laughs> I'll probably, I'll probably never wash it anyway. And then I have my jingle earrings to match. Let me cover up all my wrinkles. <laughs> jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, fun it is to ride in a one-horse open sleigh. Hey! <laughs> I'm just gonna do a real quick snippet today. It is Thursday. Today's the day Jerry was supposed to go to his dentist. It's been six months. They had to drill a hole in his head or something and put some cement in there so you can screw one of those teeth up inside it. And so they had to wait all this time for that, whatever little surgery he had to heal. So he was supposed to go today, finally, and had to cancel. Ah, <laughs> oh, the world, it's just so crazy. He ordered some... I think he calls them implements. I'm not sure what an implement is, other than something like you operated on somebody with and removed their uh, pancreas or something, but um, some kind of implements for his tractor. So I said, well, Merry Christmas again. <laughs> um, he, he's always getting things that can't go under a tree type thing, you know what I mean? So since he's getting it and it is Christmas, that's going to be his Happy Merry Christmas. <laughs> Other than the one thing that I got him uh, several weeks ago at Shields, and it is under the tree right now, under our little bitty baby tree. In fact, I keep going to my laptop to see if there's such a thing as just a little strand of lights that takes batteries. Just little, like maybe 50 at the most, maybe 25. And I keep forgetting and getting sidetracked. Well, when you get to be 72, <laughs> I need to get you off the track, the sidetrack track, and they need to put you back on the remember what the heck you're doing and while you're doing it and finish it track. <laughs> I don't know if you can ever get back over there again. So I have something I started making yesterday. It's almost done and I have to be sure and show it to you before I finish this video. So I just want to say Happy Merry Almost Christmas, there's snow, snow. We're way down southern Oklahoma. You could walk to Texas from where we live. There's snow on the ground. It is so windy, it's whistling through the trees. Whistling, that's not whistling. I can't whistle. Oh my gosh, my dad could whistle. He could whistle so good, he could whistle like a song, like a whole song. He could sing and he could whistle. He was really cute. So, very, very cold. The trees. I should turn the camera around and show you. The trees are like this. It is so windy out there. Oh, my goodness. I'm glad we're not sitting someplace in uh, our RV in a parking lot right now. I'm so glad we came home. <laughs> I started to tell you about Jerry's dentist. He's been waiting six months to go in to get his tooth put in. And today was the day, but the people, so I'll tell you this crazy world, the company, whoever it is, couldn't send his implements, some, some big thing you put behind a tractor and you move rocks with it type thing. Or you put it in front of your tractor and lift buildings with it. I don't know what it is. But they couldn't just mail it to us or ship it to us. And we have to be here. He has to be here to get it because he has to get it off the truck himself or some nutty thing. And it was supposed to be here yesterday. Never showed up. Supposed to be today between 10 and 12. Well, it's already five minutes after 11 and there's no implement delivery that I have seen, not yet. But I did get an email saying your MSQC box has been delivered. Now I got that yesterday, but there was no box. <laughs> I don't know if they consider delivery to the person at the post office. If the post office gets it and they say, okay, that's been delivered, check it off. I don't know. But since it said yesterday it was delivered and it's almost noon today, I'm going to go get that if it's here. And in my next snippet, I'll show you the fun, fun thing that I made. And I'll show you what I got from MSQC. How about that? So I went downstairs to see if my package came in, and lo and behold, here it is. 
very, very wet because it's snowing outside. And my package has a hole in it and it was raining. So I'm hoping that the things inside are somehow protected. Let's see. Ooh. Have y'all tried the um, bundles at Missouri Star? This was one of my bundles. You can order stuff every day for seven days. And then they just put it someplace for you. They just start you a stack. Because if you spend so much money, there's no free. So, it's really cool. So I didn't pay any freight on this, but I had to wait seven days to get it for them to mail it. So this was a specialty one day. You know, they have specials. And this is either three yards or five yards of this pretty batik. Let me see what it says. Five yards of this pretty batik. And I thought it was pretty for my, um, for my coach. I think it matches my colors in the coach. I'm not positive. Sometimes I get too turquoise or I get too blue or I get too green. But I think this is close. I should have a scrap of the fabric I used to make my um, quilt for the bed. But this would be really pretty uh, pillowcases to put on my bed if it matches. If it doesn't, I'll use it for a backing on a quilt or something. But isn't it pretty? Mm. Luscious. Then these were probably 40% off one day. And since they're batiks, I decided I should have them. So these are really pretty. They had one prettier than this, prettier than everything the other day. It was gorgeous, all turquoises, really turquoise turquoises. And it was sold out like the first hour, I think. I got none of it. Pretty? Pretty, pretty, pretty? You know, I'm gonna have a giveaway. I have noticed, of course, that I've reached 25,000. But, Anybody can see that 25,000 people do not watch me. Five, 6,000. Some of my older videos I've gotten 25, 30,000. Um, they weren't monetized back then. <laughs> oh darn, I wish they were. <laughs> so um, I'm not making that much money, but I don't do it for the money. I mean, it's very nice to get the money, don't get me wrong. And, uh, I buy things like this, but I want to do a giveaway, a big giveaway, but I can't. The thing about it is, and if you listen to Becky, if you do one on YouTube, so many people come in that don't know you, don't care about you, and they try to get the free stuff that you're giving away, plus they steal your channel. Somebody, one of you told me that somebody's using my name and my channel saying I'm giving away free gifts. And that's what's happening to Becky. And so Becky told me a different way to do the gifts. And I need to do that. And I will do that. But I'm not the brainiest computer person. And I've got to change to WordPress for my blog. You know, I did a blog called Joyful Expressions. I did a blog. You just go to um, joyfulexpressions.blogspot.com, I think. It's been so long since I've done it. I think it's a Google thing. But Becky said I need to get a WordPress website. And then there's some kind of an app you can get to go with it where you can give gifts away and people can't defraud it or, you know, people that don't know me win something or people steal it and say they're giving the gifts away. Ugh, why is everybody so dishonest? Why? Why? why, why, why? Okay, so here's another piece that I got. And this is a two-yard boutique. So anytime they have half-price fabric, I buy it and I put it in my stash. So boutiques are wonderful. You can make blouses with boutiques. Just wash them first. Wash fabric first always if you're going to wear it. If I'm going to quilt with it, I do not wash it. But this is very lovely. It's a, um, it's like a... What do you call that when the colors go from light to dark or something? Uh, I don't know. It's kind of a stripe or not a stripe or I'm not sure. <laughs> but that's what was in this bag. More boutiques, more boutiques. So that isn't even very Christmassy, is it? But I consider it a Christmas gift. So 
good enough for me. So far this morning, I made French toast out of some bread. I made some bread, my very first bread, out of my new bread machine that I bought myself for Christmas. Because I used to have a bread machine and I loved it. I used to make bread in it a lot. But I don't know if it broke or I decided I was gaining too much weight eating so much bread or what. But I decided to try it again and maybe make some lower calorie bread. You know, you got to figure out a recipe. So I made my very first bread. Well, this is a funky bread machine. It says it has a small footprint but makes a big loaf of bread. Well, it turns out the bread is deep and wide what's that song there's a river flowing deep and wide <laughs> well my bread is deep and wide <laughs> i mean it's like one and a half times of a normal size of a piece of bread oh uh, so anyway i made a big big mistake and so here's a tip i have a bread tip this morning as i forgot you know it's been ages it's been goodness 15 years maybe more since i made bread so here's the thing when you take the hot bread out of the bread machine and you put it on the rack to cool even if you bought yourself a brand new fancy wooden tray with little sides on it that have slits so you can slice your bread even if you have one of those you have to wait until your bread is totally totally cool I read about it later on after I took the bread out of the bread machine called Jerry in and said Come, 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 I'm going to cut the bread, let's see if it's any good. And it cut horrible, just horrible, just fell apart. So I read later, I don't know why it didn't tell you this, it said put it on a rack to cool. Well, I cooled it like 10 minutes. And so, um, you know, I eat apple pie that way. So I sliced it for me and for Jerry and it just came out terrible, absolutely terrible. And so then I thought, well, maybe I'll slice it fatter, you know, because I had my slicing thing. So I sliced it fatter. Well, I not only sliced it fatter, I sliced it crooked. The piece was an inch wide. <laughs> oh, no bread. So this morning I took this great big fat slice of deep and wide bread and I made French toast with it. And I cut it in half and he ate half and I ate half. So <laughs> my tip of the day is, after I got on YouTube and looked it up, let the bread completely, totally cool, like two hours. Because, according to what I read, it's not finished cooking until all the heat comes out of the middle and goes out through the crust. Then it's done. So, evidently that's why when you go into Panera Bread or a bakery, they've got all the loaves of bread just sitting on shelves. They're not in paper, they're not in plastic, they're not covered, they're just sitting there. So, I guess that's why. They're all cooling. So here's my new, 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 new. I really, really liked it yesterday <laughs> when it was on um, Lucy. You know, Lucy's my mannequin. And I loved it on her. But this morning when I put it on, I tried on three different pair of red stretchy pants. And none of them, three different colors of red. You know, there's so many colors of red. None of them matched the red in this Merry Christmas. So my plan was to wear red pants with it, but I can't because none of my reds match. So I'm having to wear it with black. Why did I want to wear it with red? Because it's got this lace on the bottom. And I thought that would be fun if it showed up more. <laughs> and I've got to make some earrings. Hey, you wanna watch me make some earrings? Let me move you over. Ah, look what I've got, look what I've got. I've already opened them up. Let me tell you what they are exactly in case you're jewelry maker people like me. These are from Fire Mountain Gems, and the color is Peridot, my August birth sign symbol, what do you call it? Um, 14 millimeter Rivoli's, and there were four, but now there's only two, but look at this, look at this. I have these little hanger thingies. Can you see the hanger thingy? And so you glue, oh, these are gorgeous. You glue the little rulies inside these little holder things and with E6000, you know about E6000, don't you? If you don't, I'll show you. E6000. It's a really good glue that you make jewelry with. So I'm going to make these sparkly little rivulies 
in these little gold cup holders and then I'm going to hang them from something and put them in my ear. All right, I'll be back when I get it all done and you can see. I had to bring you over and show you how sparkly are they pretty. <laughs> I'm sure the light's all completely totally wrong. So I glued them and when you glue them you have to let them dry. You're supposed to let them dry 24 hours but I'm not letting them dry that long because I want to wear them today with my sparkly Christmas tree. <laughs> my jewelry making department is such a mess. I'm not kidding you. I've got half done projects. I still have these orange earrings. <laughs> They're so pretty. I think I want, might do them for a giveaway. I've got to do some giveaways for my channel as soon as I figure out how. So, all done. They're not. i got to take them off and I've got to let them dry longer, but I just wanted to show you. Like, if you didn't know me and you just saw me walking down the street and you just happened to look at me and you'd go, oh, look at those sparkly earrings. <laughs> I would actually do that. I would. If I saw someone, I went, oh, and I'd go up to her and say, hey, where'd you get those earrings? I'm just that crazy. I have to go. It's the most wonderful time of the year with the kids jingle belling and everyone telling you be of good cheer. It's the most wonderful time of the year. Ah! What do you think of a new shirt? <laughs> Yes, this shirt's a little small and I'm a little big, but I put on the sucky, the sucky thing, you know, it comes up to here. I could not stand it. I can't stand anything tight. You know, it's bad enough to have this ever-expanding uh, dominion down here, <laughs> but to squish it, I don't know how the girls stand it. I don't know how the girls stand those squishy things that pull all their fat in. Oh my heavens. So anyway, it's Christmas Eve, my friends, December 24, 2022, and this is going to be the end of this snippet collection. <laughs> I'll to come up with whatever to call that. <laughs> but I want to first thank you so very much for all of your wonderful Christmas wishes to me and to Jerry, and even invitations to your homes. Oh my goodness. You just can't get more friendly and loving and generous than that, can you? So, thank you so much for that. I have got to get busy making my Christmas shirt. It'll be the last one I'm making. Next year, I'll have to make one for all the days I don't have one for, so I can have 25 shirts. Oh, my. <laughs> well, I've certainly got enough fabric to do it, don't I? And so, this morning, I made an apple pie, my second apple pie of my whole entire life because it reminds me of my mom. Every Christmas, my mom made three or four apple pies. She always used Macintosh apples. We don't have Macintosh apples here. So this is my second apple pie. My very second apple pie. I'm still horrible at the crimping. And my pie looks like there was an earthquake involved in the oven. It goes up on one side and down on the other side. I'm gonna get better, I promise. What I need to do is make a pie every week, and that would be really good, wouldn't it? <laughs> I may even try making my own crust on the next one. My mom always made her own crust. So let me show you a picture of my apple pie. Oh, and let me tell you this. Mother always made three or four pies, and because she would take them to the kids' houses, you know, the different places that she went for Christmas, and she and Daddy would have one at home. And so she always made one for just me, and she put my name in the top of it. So that's why my name is in the top of the pie, because it reminds me of my precious mother who I loved very much. This is Christmas Eve day and I want to thank all of you so very very much for all the comments you have left me. Me and Jerry with your Merry Christmases and even invitations to your homes. Oh my goodness. <laughs> How generous is that? Thank you, thank you, thank you. We appreciate it. And we're so blessed to have you out there. So I just want to say 
Have a wonderful, wonderful Christmas tomorrow if you get a chance to see this today. And New Year coming up. Oh, it's going to be a good year. 2023, it has to be a better year. I believe God has angels out working everywhere. And He has a plan. He has a plan for good and not for evil. And I know that because the Bible says so. And for those of you who say, Oh no, she's talking about the Bible. It's Christmas, y'all. Allow me one little snippet praising my Jesus. I love you all. Gonna let you go for now. God bless you all.